Hey guys, welcome back to another awesome video. Today we're going to be learning how to do hand animation in Final Cut Pro. Let's get started. It is not specifically for a hands animation per se because it will give you all the ideas about how to do any kind of animation in Final Cut Pro from moving objects on the screen to playing around with the camera, anything at all. Before we get started, just a bit about me. I'm actually self-taught Final Cut Pro user for past six months, I would say, and I love to teach. And so I really hope that you guys like it. Let's get started. So the first thing if you see is since the video is about how to use a certain app on your iPhone. I'm gonna download a PNG for iPhone. Any kind of PNG for this video, we're gonna be going for iPhone 6. Let's see if we can find any. A simple Google search with the word PNG would give you a lot of PNGs for iPhone. Be very careful about the copyright issues. Since this is an educational purpose video, I'm gonna give credit to the person who actually made it or where you can find it. It's actually at the freeiconspng.com website where you can definitely find this kind of images. Check out their website. You might be able to find something awesome there. So once you have saved the image, you can import it into your Final Cut Pro. Just in case you don't know how to import, you can go to files and import and just locate your file and it'll import into this section right here. Now we're gonna look for the background and we're gonna go for the basic default background and we're gonna choose one of these. Um, I guess this one looks, drifting looks a lot better. So let's get that. And you can simply drag and drop it onto your timeline. Just in case you don't know how to import, you can go to files and import and just locate your file and it'll import into this section right here. Drag and drop it onto your timeline. Stretch it out so it actually goes all the way to the end as long as you have the background. Now, since we want to cover this iPhone with the actual app video that we recorded, we're going to have to import that as well. And we're going to have to set it up on top of this screen of this iPhone in a way that it actually looks like the actual screen of this iPhone. So once you have that file located, I'm not going to take the entire file because it's too long. I'm just going to take um, whatever I want to animate on in this short video and just import that in here. Again, I would have to make sure that the timeline is the same stretched out as the actual background. Once we're done with that, this is where it gets kind of tricky. So I'm going to zoom into the screen like so, and I'm going to start changing the transformation of the recorded video that we currently have. And after doing that, if you see the actual screen, it seems like a bit tilted. So I'm going to have to play around with the other. Oh, no, not actually. This this seems like it looks good. So we're good. We're good. I have, we are actually, yeah, we've done it. So as you can see, this actually looks like the actual screen of the phone. Let's start bringing in the hand PNG and start animating that. Again, I would have to make sure that the length of this hand animation is the same as the background length, so it covers up the timeline for that. Since this is the part where the animation is about to happen, let me give you an overview of what animation is and how Final Cut Pro deals with it. Animation is basically when your movie remembers exactly what the position of an object was at a certain time and after this many seconds or frames, this object moved to this position. And every time the movie is played, it knows that at this second, it was at this position of the screen and next three seconds, it actually moved from this side to that side or whatever. I hope it makes sense. And how Final Cut deals with it is by putting frames on the timeline. So if you see, there is this square which represents transform um, function in Final Cut Pro. Transform basically means you can change the size of the screen or the clip that you have and you can move it around on the screen as well. 
And on the top left corner, you see a plus sign. This is the frame that you can add onto the timeline. So once you click on it, you see all of these values get highlighted, which means you can change all of these values and at that frame, Final Cut Pro would remember that. And every second you add a frame and change the values of that object, it'll remember to move it or turn it around or whatever you did with it. And every time you play that movie, it'll do that. Now let's get started with the animation. So in the beginning, I know that the hand is not supposed to be on the screen. So I will add a frame in the beginning of this clip and simply move it off the screen. And it'll remember that in the beginning, the position of that hand was off the screen. I'm going to wait for it to render all this information. And then I'm going to zoom into the timeline so I can see the frames clearly one by one by scrolling up on the trackpad of my MacBook Pro. I'm looking for the exact moment when things started to move on the screen. So it tells you that the tap actually happened at that very frame. Once I've found the frame, I'm gonna press M as in Mary to mark it. I'm gonna move a couple of frames through before that by tapping on the left arrow button. I'm going to leave another mark there. Now this mark is actually for the moment when my hand actually was on top of that button and started to actually drop down to tap it. I'm going to drop another frame at that spot and I'm just going to pull my hand PNG out onto the point where I want it to be on the screen at that very frame. If you see that red line, this is basically the path of that PNG which it will follow between the previous frame and this current frame. I'm gonna drop it there and let it render again. Now this next step is just an optional because I want to have it more realistic so I want to move the finger as well and that's the only reason the next step is going to be done. You don't have to do it but I want to keep it more realistic and that's the only reason I'm doing it. Anyways, if you drop down the menu beside the transform button, you'll see the option of distort. That's what we're going to be using for this one. You can change all of these values with this distort option as well. So we're going to drop another frame there and start to move it around from one side. Sorry, it should be on the second frame where it, it goes down. And on the first frame, it should just stay up where it was, but it should remember that spot as well. So it can do the animation in between these two frames. Now we are done with the tapping part. Now we have to start moving the finger around on the screen so it actually starts moving with that mood indicator in the back. And for that, we're gonna be choosing transform and we're gonna zoom in so we know exactly what's going on here. Every time this knob actually moves, we're gonna move our hand and we're gonna drop a frame there as well. And we're gonna keep doing that until all the animation of that hand is actually done. Once it's done, we're gonna stop moving the hand and we're gonna go back to actually picking the finger up off of the screen. And for that, we're gonna go back to distort. So just follow along and see how that goes. I'm simply moving on my timeline by tapping on the right arrow button on the keyboard and just following the movement of that mood indicator on the screen and following the hand PNG behind him and just dropping the actual frames every time I move the hand so it remembers the position every second.
and we're done with the hand animation in terms of moving it and now we're going to go back to lifting up the finger off the screen so we're going to find the place where we stop moving the hand and we're going to drop another frame on distort option and we're, after two or three frames off of that we're going to lift it up and put all the values to zero so it actually lifts up Let's go back and review what we've done and see how it went down. It looks good so far, I would say. It turned out pretty well. Now, once we are done with this screen, we want to bring the hand off of the screen. So two or three or four frames down the road on the timeline, we're going to drop another frame and just bring the hand PNG down off the screen so it remembers to bring it back afterwards as well. That's basically it, and this is exactly how it looks. Now we're gonna continue on with the rest of the footage so we can actually complete the entire video. Just follow along and do the exact same thing. Drop the frame, move the hand, drop another frame down three or four frames away on the timeline, move the hand again start moving the finger by distort remember to before start moving your finger around drop another frame and record the normal position of the finger and then start moving it to a different position i hope you guys understand the actual logic behind this animation you can just follow along the rest of the video before actually the ending part where you actually have to slide your hand on the screen which is a bit tough but it can be very easy once you understand how it works and i'll explain to you once we get there
So just to understand the actual sliding of the hand on the screen is basically we are reaching just before the time when the screen starts to slide to that spot, any spot on the screen, and then dropping the finger down. And while the finger is actually dropped down, we're gonna start moving our hand. And then once we're done enough distance, we're gonna lift the finger to represent that the hand has come off the screen already. So all this thing, you can simply follow along on the screen in this tutorial as well. And and you'll get it. This is all I have for you awesome people today. I hope you guys like this video. Please hit that like button if you did. Subscribe to stay tuned for more awesome content like this. Whatever you do, do not forget to smile and pass it on to others. Until then, this is TJHD signing off and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.